Hello and welcome to episode 43 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. So what's going on? Nothing much. My allergies are killing me. My throat sucks. Okay, so I know within the past few episodes we've been talking a lot about Final Fantasy games. We grew up playing Final Fantasy games and that's one of our favorite franchises. Uh, we're going to do a little discussion since we don't have treasure for you guys. We're going to go ahead and open up for our best moments in the Final Fantasy series. We'll start with one and you know four and six and so on, and go um, all the way up to nine. If you guys want to go beyond that, that's fine. Ten is kind of weak, but there are a few good moments about it. Uh, for our next episode, we're actually going to get a little bit sexy with it. We're going to do our favorite Final Fantasy spells that could be used for sex. <laughs> You know, that you could just cast and they'd be good for sexual situations. Can you give an example that's not on your list? Uh, like we said one one time when uh, you could use fire on your pubes and just send them all off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fire one, of course. You don't want to get into fire three or anything. <laughs> fire Raga. Um, oh, maybe using wall as a condom. <laughs> <laughs> It should be interesting. Uh, we'll incorporate that into our discussion. That'd be a heck of a small wall, like right on the cervix. <laughs> or I was thinking around the penis, if like, because Edge, you know, he's been around, and when he goes into Rydia, he might have like herpes or gonorrhea, <laughs> which is becoming incurable, I hear. <laughs> then you could just use like uh, heal on yourself. <laughs> Remedy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or you just wear wear a ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remedy won't cure herpes. <laughs> that shit's hard to get rid of. Uh, but things like that. Look forward to that on the next episode. Nick's wife is actually going to be joining us. Uh, we'll do a little interview with her. I'll think of a few questions, and Brandon will think of a few questions. They're all going to be totally in a, a, appropriate. We might throw a little inappropriate one in there if Nick allows it. Uh. She'll, she's cool. Okay. And uh, that's Melissa. You guys could look forward to that next week. We're going to try to, you know, I'm sure me and Brandon will be more embarrassed than she will be. So She's the one who thought the combined weight of Brad, Brandon, and myself was like 700 pounds or something <laughs> yeah. stupid like that. Not, not that she's stupid, but <laughs> she just doesn't think mathematically, I guess. So that's going to be fun. Uh, we'll do that, and then the next week after that, we'll be bringing you our game show. So you could also look forward to that as well, episode 45. That's right. So let's go down the list. Has everyone beat Final Fantasy 1? Yes. Yeah, but I don't remember. Okay. I was so long ago. Yeah, that, I just, um, spoilers. Um, 4, we, I know we all beat. 6, 7, 8? I, I, I think I beat 8, but I don't remember hardly anything. I, don't, I haven't beat 8. I got to the last part, and it was like getting so stupid, I just stopped playing it. Uh, 9, I know we all beat. No, I didn't. You, you spoiled the ending when Vivi died. I don't think I said he died. Well, it was it came up in discussion. I thought you I said he I died. I mentioned it in one of our earlier podcasts. Oh, okay. but, <laughs> but it's cool. No, but that's not even the part of the ending I like. But I won't, we won't talk about that. Ten? No. I, I, I beat it, but I, again, I hardly remember okay. anything from I, it. I, I've heard about the ending. Okay, so it's okay if we talk about yeah. that. Okay. So that's good. Let's go ahead and start with one. Uh, what I wanted to talk about, one, one thing that pops out is the stupid canoe. How you could push select 33 times or whatever and bring up the slider puzzle. Oh, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, you, the slider puzzle. You get what, gold? You get like only 1,000 gold or something, something astronomically low. And I hate slider puzzles. <laughs> I don't like them when they put them in games like in um, Wind Waker. They had a slider puzzle. And you don't get anything good from it, so I didn't do it. Um, Introduction of the Four Fiends. Yeah. Uh, introduction of the Crystals. Um, did you guys have anything else you wanted to add on part one? Uh, Bahamut's in there for the first time. Well, because yes, the first game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is the Four Fiends. I know. I, uh, I thought about that when I started talking about it. I was like, this is the first game. Uh, well, I don't know if the Japanese games, the two and three, the ones that most Americans haven't played, and I know that I've never played them. Or I tried one time, and the translation was so horrible that I just gave up on it. But uh, I, I did like that uh, they allowed you to choose your own classes. Um, kind of kind of like, um, I want to say kind of like Ogre Battle, where you get to like form your own armies, although 
in this particular instance, you only got four. But I, I thought that was a cool feature and how um, isn't it after Bahamut you get to like you get like the rat tail or something like that or and you get to promote and you get to promote all your classes so I thought that was cool also but yeah I, and there's like I remember there's some really difficult things uh, I, like there was one battle with the the wizard I believe the, what's the wizard's name Garland Garland. Garland Garland yeah is that the final boss no no he's like in the middle is. of the game yeah. I think Garland uh, is the is the one where you can't use like any weapons or something like that. Does that sound familiar to you? No, I think you fight him. He's like you fight him in the beginning, like the very first boss, and you fight him again later on. Right. I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I don't remember a whole lot about it, but I I do remember it being very cool and a uh, very difficult game, especially you know the time that I was playing it in elementary school. <clears throat> and there's also this cave that I like to talk about that. Every step you take, you fight an ogre. So in order to progress throughout the whole cave, it's kind of like part four where they had all the behemoths set up stationary, um, mm -hmm. and the ogres were killers. Then they had a secret enemy called like the War Tech, um, which was pretty cool. I don't think we ever ran into them, but uh, it's cool they put secret enemies in there to find. Yeah, playing part one for after playing part four or part two in the as American version, it didn't really compare. So it took Brandon and I a long time to get through it because we really didn't like the graphics or the sound. But we eventually got through it after we got it. And I ended up did playing part three as a remake on the <coughs> DS. It sucks. Yeah. The last dungeon that you go through, you can't even save it once you go in the final dungeon. It's hmm. not cool at you all. You got that far. You... I beat it. Yeah. It. They have Bahamut in it. They have job classes. Part two, they have set job classes um, like part four but part three sucked i don't like part two's leveling up system it was kind of like um you didn't get experience but say if an enemy hit you, like one character their defense would go up so you could hit your your own party members to make their defense go up or their hp <laughs> go up that's fine it was weird and if of course if you attacked more your attack would go up stuff like that well, let's talk. Let's, enough of that shit. <laughs> let's get to the real meat and bones, part four. The first Final Fantasy game we played, very cool game. We loved it from start to finish. That game inspired me to go into the dictionary and look up all the monsters to see if they were in there, <laughs> like Rock. Yeah, Behemoth. And, yep, that was heck of cool, putting uh, real dictionary terms to the enemies. What did, what did you say, Rock? Uh-huh, R-O-C. That, that, oh. That's in Mystic Quest, I thought. No, because when you the rocks when you go to the town of Mysidia as Cecil and you're going to the the Mount Ordeal, you could fight rocks and they're weak against the weapon. It says swoon when you kill them. Yeah. Like, like there's a death weapon that he, had, he could equip, and when you hit him, it says swoon. Those big it, purple things. Yeah, the big birds. I thought they were named something else, but maybe not. Hmm. But um. Yeah, so many great elements to the game. The story, the characters, Cecil, Rosa, Kane, Rydia. It's all good. Every character on there is well-loved except for uh, Edward. <laughs> Fusoya. Fusoya, who looks like a little blob when he dies. <laughs> He's like Cousin It. It's like a funny... <laughs> yeah, but it looks like all his bones got extracted from his body. <clears throat> isn't he a Lunarian? Maybe they don't have bones. <clears throat> well, Cecil has bones. He's half, isn't he? Half and half. He's got the bone that counts. Who's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I was like a jealous. <laughs> he's like, I just have this wooden rod. <laughs> uh, I I think my favorite part of that are the four fiends. They have the best music, I think, in all the Final Fantasy games. Uh, Melon, Rubik Conte, which I looked online and it said you pronounce it Rubik Conte. I like Rubik Cant. Yeah, Rubik Rubicant or Rubicant? <laughs> I'm a Rubicant. Yeah. Um, the Barbaricia, whatever her name is. The, mm -hmm. um, the window. Kane Azo. Yeah. I liked uh, Underground when you go underground and you got to fight the marionettes and they formed that giant marionette. Calvaria. And and it was like when you dropped, after you got the, after, after you got, before you got to Underground, you dropped the magma inside or the key inside of the well and it opened up underground and it like opened up a whole new whole new world because you thought it was just surface you had to go to no they have underground with dwarves and 
Then you go to the moon. It's like a huge game for what it was. You also had the the Magus sisters and um, what are those? I think they're just called CPUs. Those those orb oh, things. Man, yeah. Those were pretty cool too. Yeah, those were heck of hard. Yeah, they were. At the end of the game, you have to kill the Iron Giant to fight all four fiends again, plus the CPUs. Those things are vicious. Mm-hmm. Then the new nuke. Oh fuck! Yeah. What about the? Wasn't the evil wall in Final Fantasy four? Yeah. That was pretty sick. <clears throat> I like that whole dungeon with the fake trap doors. Yeah. Because they gave you a heck of experience. Yeah, I know. I remember that. And they had heck of cool treasure behind them. Yeah. And also the. Um, <clears throat> the second time I forgot about it. Talk, keep talking, I'll remember. Uh, first introduction of summoners. I, no, you could summon in part three, but this is one where it really counted. Uh, first, you you know, radio, she's a caller. They call them the, a caller, but they're really summoners. Uh, you know. It's interesting. Right at the beginning of the game, what the king is trying to do is to destroy all the summoners. And it turns out that Rydia is like the only one that's left. So yeah. She joins your party, of course, and it goes from there. Yeah. You see just how powerful the summoners are. It's cool. Yeah. And then also, yeah. like, the secret weapons you get, fighting Ogopogo and, uh, like, the demon eye things, the floating, the plague eyes, I think they were called. You got a ribbon from that, I believe. Yeah. Optional, you know, bosses who you could get great strength from, the crystal sword, the... Which I think in the Japanese version was Ragnarok. Was it? Yeah. And a little foreshadowing, you also have to fight some of the uh, the monsters to gain their ability to summon as well. Yes. There might be some uh, foreshadowing there. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you also forgot two important characters. Yang? The Palm and Poram. Palm and Poram. Yeah. <laughs> Not Yang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, Yang was cool because he could equip uh, two gloves, like a fire and ice cloth. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. He's all right. Elemental damage, but... His kick was kind of sexy, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that kick. <laughs> but, yeah, when Palm and Poram uh, turned themselves into stone to save the party, that was pretty emotional, really. It was. As, as a kid watching that, I was like, wow. They just made martyrs of themselves. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And Very emotional moment. And Soft wouldn't work on him for some reason. It's because they did it of their own free will. Crazy. The the tunnels or the um, corridors squeezing together and they each get on one side and turn the tubs to someone so you could exit. And then the sad music starts playing and I was just like sitting there. I didn't want to play for a little bit. <laughs> I went up and talked to him like Five times, <laughs> and all you saw was that dot 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 <laughs> ellipses. Yeah, <laughs> I like their twin uh, spells that they did together too. Like they did like flare and comet, and I think there was one other one as well, but I can't remember what it was. Right no, now. I think it was those two. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. And the um, the Stardust Rod, I actually didn't learn about that until I started playing through it again a few years ago. But you could use it, and it casts comet. Oh, use it in battle. Yeah, that was another cool thing that they added in there that you could actually use the weapons for, you know, magic purposes. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, and you can throw them too with uh, edge. Yeah, it sucks because we never threw our weapons. We, the only time we threw them was when we fought zero miss. We always kept on. Yeah, like even the shirt. That's what I did also. Stuff. Yeah, I always saved them till the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it turned out by the time you got there, you didn't really need them because you were already so leveled up. Yeah. But it's fun to hold on to them for the big battles. I like that final dungeon where there's all the evil-looking monsters, like the giant faces that were like half-machine kind of. They're all freaky-looking. Mm. My only gripe about that game is the final boss just sleeps for the whole game. Yeah. I agree. What wakes him up? I think Golbez and Fusiro go down there and wake him up to kill him. <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> they're like sneaking through the cave, and then he's asleep, and then he's like, I'm going to use Mateo, and all of a sudden he just wakes up and just kills him. <laughs> <laughs> Not even W, Mateo would work. Oh, yeah, when it was all white. No, it wasn't white, it was just called W, w Mateo. Oh, I thought they had white balls. And it took out. away the, the same amount of life. 
and had zero was sleeping through the whole thing, as opposed to Final Fantasy VI's Kefka. <laughs> yes. So when if if they didn't go to the moon, would... so you're gonna go back to Final Fantasy IV <laughs> after doing a segue? Beautiful segue, Ryan. <laughs> That's okay. So when they go back to the moon, what happened now? So if they never would have got the whale and went to the moon, then everything would have been cool. No, Zemus would have eventually woken up and destroyed everything. Like who knows when. Mm -hmm. Like you knew in uh, in Day of the Lavos, you knew when Lavos was going to awaken in 1999 A.D. Chrono Trigger. That was my segue into Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Another fucking game I need to play all the way through. Never played all the way through that one. Yeah, um, that'd be cool if, like, Lavos came over to Final Fantasy IV and just, like, kicked Zunus' ass. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll show you how to wake up, bitch. <laughs> wake up and the whole world gets destroyed. <laughs> I was going to say, you could borrow my copy on the DS, but you don't have a DS, huh? I think I actually have the game on one of the... Um... Nintendo Wii thing? No, I probably could get it on there, but I think I have it, like, there's a couple of PlayStation yeah. Final Fantasy Origin type games. Yeah. And it's on one of those. I have, oh, okay. I have Origins and Chronicles. and I It's on Chronicles, I think. I think there's one other one, but I, I know it's on one of them. It's talking about Chronicles, what about Chrono Cross? That game was heck of fun. I never played it. A lot it. of people didn't like it, but I thought it was pretty cool. It was like a like a pseudo-sequel to Chrono Trigger. Mm -hmm. Like, in Chrono Cross, you could like see Chrono in there for like a split second, like if you do everything right. But uh, that's a whole different tale from a whole different story for a whole different podcast. <laughs> yeah, until me and Nick play Chrono Cross. So, Final Fantasy VI. <clears throat> you want to go back to four? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go back to five. Oh, man. Five? No, I didn't. <laughs> it was in that Barks. Oh, I don't remember. I think it's on my Final Fantasy Theater rhythm game for 3DS, which is hella cool. You get to play main characters, and Barts is on there. But with six, that that just blew me away with the whole light and dark world, and you, it was really like you're a loss of words when Celis is the only one left alive, and you got to go find everyone, and you're just like everybody's dead. Like it's, it was depressing. Yeah. But it was really powerful at the same time. Punjaba, what that guy? Punjaba. Yeah, that guy was heck of hard. Not really. Not once Terra got her stupid strength back. And it got her. Didn't she turn into her Esper form to fight him? Yeah. But there is that cool glitch with the Esper form. Uh, when you put her to sleep and her Esper thing runs out and you wake her up, full battle, she gets to be an Esper. Huh. But, um, yeah, Final Fantasy VI is a great story. You have to. The summon monsters in, in this world is called Espers. You actually have to go hunt down the Magicite. Once an Esper dies, it turns into a Magicite, so you can har harness its power and gain spells from them and summon them. It's so awesome. You get to find all these cool Espers. Of course, the strong ones come late in the game, but there's uh, Tritach, there's Bismarck, which is sucks dick, big well, um, Unicorn, all these cool Espers. You know Torado? Yeah. You know what his Japanese name is? No. The Midgard Zorum. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did read that one time. I was doing some research. Remember Midgard Zorum from Final Fantasy VII? The is it Midgard or Midgar? In, in the set six, it's Midgard, but in seven, it's Midgar. You know, I looked this up. I think Midgard refers to some sort of um, Norse mythology. Yeah, it right? does. Like, there was a Midgard serpent that right. Thor had to fight that they killed each other in Ragnarok, the end of days for Norse mythology. Yeah. So my the moment I like talking about when I talk about Six is the whole everybody getting separated, uh, everything's in ruin, and you just have to go build an army to go fight Kefka. You don't have to get everybody. There's certain characters you have to get, but it's just amazing how they did it. It was well thought out and well played. I like the... Auction house and the Colosseum. That was fun. At the auction house, you get to go in and possibly buy espers if they go for sale. But in the Colosseum, you could wager items for different items. You get some pretty rare ones. If you uh, bet the 10 Tenna Bomb, you get the Genji Glove. So that's the only way you get abundance of Genji Gloves. And 10 Tenna Bombs double your experience? No. 
every step every step that you walk you gain health back oh okay yeah so it's not really that big of a yeah swap out i'd take a jedi glow over that any day yeah um the world of ruin opened up new dungeons opened up they released eight dinosaurs that you had to fight oh i forgot about that and i know uh maybe you should be like me and nick and beat it within the last couple years <laughs> i i started playing it i got to the uh the floating island and i was getting everyone's um uh, to learn every magic spell so the eight the eight demons that get released that's what poon poon baba no there's just zones. different the, those aren't the dinosaurs there's just different demons that get released uh there's the death gaze yeah that you can only fight in the airship there's the poon baba and a few others i think so the eight dinosaurs is that the ones that like the what's that it's not eight dinosaurs or we're talking about in the forest where gal learns his no this is when when i think they're dragons actually they're eight dragons that go over the world like there's one in uh narsh there's the ice dragon that you have to fight in the opera house there's like the earth dragon oh okay and um <laughs> yeah, they are dragon <laughs> yeah. But there, yeah. there are dinosaurs in there too. There's yes. like a Brachiosaur and a Tyrannosaur. Which are hard as fuck. Yeah, they're like the toughest uh, monsters in the game. And they, they're only in one little section of forest in the world of Ruin. And it looks like a little Brontosaur, the, the piece of forest. Yeah. So the dragons, do they give you Magicite when you kill them? Or like grand, like different items? And stuff? No, they give you different items like powerful armor, weapons. Um, but if you beat all eight of them, they give you Crusader. Oh okay. The one of those strongest. Well, it's a. Uh, um, it yeah. gives you meltdown. The spell meltdown. So is defeating those dragons is that considered to be optional? Yes. Really? I don't remember that. I just assumed that I had to do it. Well, I don't think I assumed that I had to do it. I assumed that I wanted to do it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so meltdown is that the spell that casts and then the enemy's life just t- ticks down? No, it hurts you and the enemy both. Um. I mean, that's there's so many great aspects to that game. I liked. Uh, where did you fight the guy who who uses X Zone on you? That's in Science Dream. No, he doesn't use X Zone on you, does he? Or yeah, I thought he did. And or you could use it on him and take away some of his. Well, the thing is, is there's a glitch in Final Fantasy three, the English version, where if you turn someone invisible and use X Zone, they automatically die. Mm-hmm. So he starts off as invisible. You could use Exone on him to kill him. Instantly. Oh, okay. But the, I remember that guy was tough if you didn't know that. Mm. And then he w- he awakens with his most powerful samurai technique, which is kind of stupid. Um, but that's another thing is each person has their own side story that mm-hmm. if you completed it, you they gain a cool ability. Like a, a Sabin, his Bums Rush or Phantoms Rush. Edgar, I don't, I don't know if you gain anything from. I this, don't know. I don't. Other think... than the satisfaction of knowing Saban and Edgar's story. Mm. Realm and Strago. Strago gains the ultimate spell in the, the Eden Rock, where you have to fight his nemesis. Oh, I don't, I don't remember. I kind of remember that, but you have to feed the super treasure chest like the. Oh portal. yeah. How did you figure that out? I don't know. You have to just get lucky and or know what chest contains what coral. You have to feed him like exactly 22 pieces of coral, and then he moves. Uh, I also like the parts when the parties get split up in the beginning, where there's uh, you each get a unit leader, Sabin, uh, Locke, and uh, Bannon, I think, or Terra. Mm-hmm. And you each have to find your way back to each other. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, and also the uh, whole, I thought you were talking about where you split your party up and put them into different strategies while no, the no, enemies no. come. That was cool. Yeah, that was cool. With Kefka. Kefka deserves a big shout out. He's one of the main reasons I love that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's pretty hilarious. What if when you got to the top of Kefka's tower, it was Zero Miss Sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> and Kefka was laying there dead. And he, 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 that would have been hilarious. <laughs> I mean, not when we were little. We were like, why is he here? But... <laughs> The, at the end of your book, you should say, and then Zemus awoke or something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have anything else to add about six? I know we've talked about it a lot. Celeste was a high choice for me for my daughter's name. 
but we landed on Rosalie, which was named after Rosa from Final Fantasy IV. Was it a coin flip? Either Celeste or Rosa? No. Mm -hmm. Melissa, Vito Melissa, Celeste. Melissa didn't like Celeste, uh, but it was it was high on the list for me. Sounded too black. <laughs> Is that a black name? Uh, Celeste. Celeste? Yeah. There was just this black lady on Days of Our Lives called Celeste. That's well, well uh, Melissa said Rosa was too nice Hispanic. Or... Yeah. So that's why we call her Rosalie. And I call her Rosa and she calls her Rosie. Mm -hmm. I call her Rosa. Heck yeah. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII, a lot of this game got a lot of nerds on the bandwagon loving Final Fantasy. Uh, you got a lot of people who didn't play Final Fantasy series up until seven because they're a bunch of retards. <laughs> um, it did have a lot of cool elements to it though. Uh, Sephiroth, the Golden Saucer was by far one of my favorite things as a kid to play. Um, I liked Fort Condor. Fort Condor was also very awesome, a, a defense game. Mm -hmm. Uh, a castle defense game. You had to. You actually got Phoenix from that. Um, being a teenager, Tifa was awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I preferred Aerith for, personally. Tifa was funner to look at. <laughs> Out of, in, in hindsight, of course, Aerith would make a good wife more than Tifa. Tifa would just be like a tomboy slut who go do <laughs> like Barrett at the drop of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I think my something that really blew me away with this game is the summons. Yeah. The, the way they looked and it was something different because before they would just appear on screen, do a cool little spell and leave. This one had a whole introduction to them and uh, you couldn't skip it, but you got the pleasure of watching the summon the whole time. I think I would have enjoyed it more if you had the option to skip them because yeah. <laughs> some of them were ridiculously long. Yeah. And it discouraged me from using them because I mean there's so many fights. In any Final Fantasy game, sometimes you're just pressing X X X X X X X X X X yeah. just to get through the fight and gain the experience. But it'd be fun to use, you know, magic spells or summons if they didn't take quite as much time. Yeah, it even bugs me with Ultimon Part Six. Oh man! Group. And it's just like, <laughs> come on, right. let's get past this. Uh huh. Nine 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 nine. I know. <laughs> And then you get double cast, and you got to watch that shit twice in one battle. Like, Come on. That's like a tight. And then Go-Go mimics it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're fighting the Rapiosaur, it's not bad because you, you get the Economizer. But so many great aspects of the game. I can't even – like the whole um, underwater where you're in the submarine and the huge materia. Remember that, the master materia. Mm -hmm. Just leveling up all of our spells to master level so we could get a new master materia, which was awesome. You get the whole – they have green, red, blue, yellow, purple. If you get all the green spells, you get to use them as many times as you want, and you can just put that one material ball on that person's weapon and gain access to all the spells. That was a cool concept too. I thought how they had like the slots for each of the materia, that depending was awesome. on which which weapon you had. Like you can link some of them together, and you can only put so many on some weapons, and you can fill up another one. It was, it's just a really cool aspect. It's a little thing to add on top of the game if you were an experienced farmer and just gain experience like me and brandon <clears> did and gain all the masters they even have weapons that had double or even triple yeah you get that mm -hmm. much more amount which was so cool and that would factor into like what equipment you would put on like if you're just trying to gain experience you would maybe sacrifice some power in your and in, in what what how much damage you could uh Put onto your uh, enemies just so that you can get more experience with the uh, with the what do they call it? How, how do they gauge your uh, experience with the magic? AP points, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. AP points. Gods. What? God. AP god? <laughs> yeah. You mean gauge? <laughs> That's a limit god, isn't it? Yeah, limit break. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Yuffie sucked. Yuffie. I don't like her at all. I Kate never said, used her. Kate said the cool. The only th reason I didn't like Yuffie is she stole your materia, and you had to go with this find her. And she's it was, optional too. Yeah, you don't have to get her. It's retarded. Of course, we had to get her to complete it, but I hated that you had to go in the pagoda or whatever. And then I think you fight Rude and Reno. Mm -hmm. I always wanted Barrett to go rape her. Be like Barrett, just go. <laughs> go take care of that shit. Make sure she doesn't can't walk right or something. 
give her a limp so she can't <laughs> run away with her materia. Stupid ninja. Um, Red thirteen. Oh yeah. Uh, eh, I I really didn't like like care for that guy. Uh, he was never in my party like as a mainstay. But I think he had his own little side quest too that took forever. Mm -hmm. To what was that? To find out his real name. Something like that. Nanaki. So, yeah. And his father, just see how his father got turned to stone. Red was a dog, of course, or lion, or whatever you want to call him, who talked. Mm. Uh, you got to breed Kokobos in that game. Oh, man. That oh, took geez. forever to get the golden one yeah. uh, and win the Kokobo, ra Kokobo racing. I forgot about that. <laughs> I but, never did that shit. <laughs> but you needed that golden one to get Knights of the Round. That's, I think, the only yeah. reason why you needed it. You had to give it a nut and a green or something. You guess all green? Well, that's to increase the stats. You have to give it the nut to breed, which is hella funny. <laughs> and you need a male and female one. <laughs> nut to breed. <laughs> I never did that shit. There's a bunch of stuff you could do with the gold saucer, too. Like, Isn't that where you gain Cloud's final mm. limit break or whatever? Mm. In the Coliseum. That was pretty cool. I like the roller coaster. Oh, yeah, the, all the secret stuff you could shoot on the roller coaster, yeah. I never did that kind of stuff. I think I... There was something that I got there. I can't even remember what it was. And all I did was there was like a like a basketball, like a yeah. pop-a-shot game that you could play or something like that. And I played that, and I got all the points that I needed to get this one item that I wanted. I was like, all right, I'm done with this. Playing the game. And then we found out in a strategy guide there's a guy who uh, appears randomly like right by the subway entrance that you could buy the uh, points The from. gold points. Yeah. yeah. So you could trade like, I don't know, like 10,000 for one gold point. You could buy all the points you need to get Omni No, it's like 10,000 for 100. Yeah. No, you can't. Omni Slash is battle points from the Coliseum. That's the only way to get it. Uh, Omni Slash, that's what it was. And so what do you use the gold points for? Just different items. I think you use gold points to enter into the Colosseum. Yeah. Right? But you had to go into the Colosseum to get the battle points. Any other moments? Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, I think the biggest moment is Aerith dying. Oh, again. yeah. For sure. I was shocked when that happened. I was like, she's not coming back? Yeah, I kept waiting for her to come back the whole game. For sure. She was an amazing character. I liked her a lot. You even got her level 4 limit break and ultimate weapon before she died so that's how you knew she wasn't coming back but i don't think we did no, we i didn't. think we didn't get it the first time so we had no idea yeah hmm. that whole song that plays as the white material is dropping I'm like oh man that's brutal yeah you can't skip it either <laughs> traumatic it's like when i play through it now i like have to turn the tv down or something <laughs> final fantasy 8 best part of that game <coughs> Is Zell calling Seifer a chicken wuss? <laughs> oh no, Seifer calls Zell that, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, chicken like, wuss. Throughout the whole game, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the best part was Triple Triad. I, my, my favorite part, honestly, is the beginning before you take the seed exam. Uh, and that whole part. I mean, everything after that is just too... It's too weird for me. That, I, that game is, like, so weird. I hate how you have to draw to use magic. Basically, you can't... Learn spells, you have to draw them from enemies. Hmm. And so from draw points on the ground. Yeah. And once you do, like, Brandon and I would spend forever getting 100 of each spell, because the more you had of a certain spell, the stronger your stats were, which was so stupid. Yeah. Because you, you, your summon monsters wouldn't even strong unless you had the stupid draws on, or it's, the whole junction thing kind mm -hmm. of, they could have done it way better. And when you get to the near the end of the game, I was just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like, they have certain points that you have to push X that you would never know to get, like, an occult magazine to get Doom Train. Yeah. Or, right. like, to see the UFO, you have to fight in a certain spot, then a UFO will come by. You have to find, like, four times, and then you go get the UFO card. It was just weird. Um, Everything you just said, I have no recollection of. <laughs> That's how little I cared for that game. Just wiped it from my memory. Yeah, the the opening scene was pretty cool when Seifer and Cloud fought. That was pretty. Yeah, that was a nice squall. intro. And then Quistis. That was funny how she used a whip. Heck yeah, with glasses. Mm -hmm. Everything for women with glasses. 
the triple triad game was really fun. I mean, it, it kind of got weird when you got all the different rules and you couldn't just play normal triple triad. Yeah, like elemental, and uh, you had to win by two in order to get someone's cards. It was cool when you fought someone, and if you won, you got all their cards. That was cool, but that's few and far between. And then they had rare cards where you could get like character cards. Yeah. And the summon cards, which were a little bit lower than that. If you fought Zell's mom in one, she'd eventually give you the Zell card. But of course, you had to win. And they all had higher numbers. Renoa is on that game. She's like the main chick, which I don't really care for. No. What was her dog's name? Halo? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I remember looking in the strategy guide and seeing Renoa and the dog, and I was like, I'm not even going to mention the dog, and then you bring it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. that. And then there's Irvine, the cowboy guy. Oh, yeah. The sniper guy. Uh, Trini, what's her name? I don't know. Oh, jeez. Uh, feel free, you guys. If you feel like Final Fantasy VIII's a good game, let us know with some high points, because we, we will look at it and be like, oh, okay, we forgot about that. Didn't you fight a dinosaur? A he was in the garden. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Not really. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was all... It's such a weird game, and I'm sure that it's going to come up in our top five. So let's... Final Fantasy IX was a cool game. We talked about that recently. A lot, yeah. Um, the who, who was the main boss? Was his name like... Uh, Kuga? Ko, Koji, Koji or something? So, Ko, Koji, Koja. And, and, and he was uh, part of the descendant of Zidane's tribe. Because he was a monkey, too. Oh, was he? Yeah. <laughs> that game was pretty cool. Brandon not reading it. We won't go into that. Part 10. First PlayStation 2 game. I, I liked it a lot. I liked it more than 8. Oh, yeah. I liked it, too. I, I actually think about going back and playing it because it was innovative. It was it was pretty cool. I mean, it had a weak, weak, weak main character. Some guy who plays basketball underwater. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it had a lot the level up system was pretty cool yeah I like how you gotta unlock the, the grid that was hecka cool that that had Lulu right yeah. of be, course it did I'll be playing that one again soon here they should do a high def remake oh heck yeah with like cut scenes like maybe like a secret sh shower scene oh. <laughs> <laughs> remember in Lunar they had the bath scenes but they never showed anything no now they can with the the M games nowadays M games <laughs> Anyway, Final Fantasy X M, and then you could like have Lulu. You could play dress up with Lulu, and you like you could have her jump up and down, and she'd bounce like in the Dead or Alive games, like the volleyball games. <laughs> she could use those um, toys of her for for different reasons. No, that's Google. that's an a an adult only game. If we're going that far, the cactar. Uh, they could blur it out. <laughs> <laughs> the penetration part. You're you're too hardcore. <laughs> I like my video games softcore. The, I mean, the the blitz ball was kind of cool. I like how um, you know what I didn't like about the blitz ball is trying to get jet shot part two. That sucked hell. Up. Did you ever get it? No, I always because there's a, one guy on one team that would use it, and I never got to block it. That's when you're um, playing with Titus on the boat or something, right? And Jet's talking to him, and you have to like execute it by doing certain commands. And then once you do it, you could get it, but I, I never did it. Oh, either. I thought you had to get it through Blissball. No. Oh, okay. You get it from the Jet part. Oh, I Blitzball. probably didn't make it that far then. Yeah. Sin was a heck of a cool monster. Yeah. How it just ravaged the world, and um, Titus was called to destroy Sin. That was, I like that part a lot. The one part I didn't like was, of course, getting all the ultimate weapons. Very tedious task. Uh, the summons were cool. Blitz Ball was kind of cool. I can't think of any other side games that had. Uh, other characters include Kamari, which was that big blue guy. Waka. Aaron? Ar Ar Oren? The samurai guy? Oh, yeah, Oren. Um, he was like the Obi-Wan Kenobi of that game. Yeah. Uh, Yuna was on there, the summoner. and uh, Riku. Riku. The little oh, tribal the, girl. Oh, yeah. I like deciphering the outbed, um, alphabet. Because remember, they spoke in a different language. I actually go around and I keep notes of what, what letters meant what, and I was able to decipher it pretty easy. That was cool. <laughs> kind of like Demon Tongue. <laughs> if you guys don't know what Demon Tongue is, go back and listen to episode 35. 
Heaven and Hell. Very cool game show that we did. Um, that's uh, pretty much all the Final Fantasy games we want to talk about. Ten. I like to. I like twelve. Yeah, uh, I, I haven't played twelve. I like the free roaming aspect where you get to actually fight the monsters, and like I said before, um, when you come across monsters that just destroy you, it's always fun trying to beat them. Like you ran into some werewolves that you couldn't beat, but of course I always tried. That was cool. Balthier, um, Nick actually brought him up and reminded me of him. Other than the main character, what was his name again? Like Vaughn or something. Yeah, Vaughn. There's Vaughn and there's a rabbit girl. Can't remember her name. And then there was Bothier. A Fran. Wasn't it Fran? That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. But I can't remember any of the other characters. I just didn't. Bosch. <clears throat> Wasn't Bosch one of them? Maybe. Bosch. Oh, B-O- Bosch Stampede. No, Bosch. No. B O S C H. Yeah, he was the. Uh, he, I think he had a twin brother. Something like that. Yeah. Um. But it's like it's too much like uh, where you have to find items throughout the game, and if you don't get them, you miss them, and you can't finish like uh-huh. the the side quest. It sucks, and that whole cave of the friggin' astro- astronomical signs, like the Sagittarius. What is that called? Astronomy. Or astrology. Astrology, yeah. Because I took astronomy in uh, college, but astrology, the cave of astrology, it sucked. All right, so we're going to go move to our top five. Sure. Segway. Titan. Titan. Yeah. He's a summon. Yeah. So we're going to top five summon monsters of Final Fantasy. Why did you say Titan, though? The first one that came to mind. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you understand the concept of a segment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to roll to see who's going to go first. Um, Brandon gets a one. Nick gets a five. And I got a seven. So I will go first. Number five on my list out of top five summons. going to have to be Shiva. <laughs> For two big obvious reasons. <laughs> Shiver from Final Fantasy 7? It doesn't. From 7, 8, 9, or 10. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Because you really didn't have a rack in part 4 or 6. Nope. <laughs> she looked like kind of a punk rocker in part 6. Yeah. No, 4, I think. Part 6, she kind of held up the thing. It was like, Shiver. So, yeah, Shiver. Two big obvious reasons. It's my number 5. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> My number five is Alexander. Have you guys seen uh, the Miyazaki movie, Howl's Moving Castle? No. no. It's a really cool movie. You've seen other Miyazaki movies, right? I haven't seen any of his, uh, like the Princess Mononoke and all them. Yeah. No, I haven't. I actually wanted to, Melissa and I are going to a movie tomorrow, and I wanted to go see the new Miyazaki movie. Mm-hmm. It's called The Wind Rises. And she's all, I don't, I don't really like those kinds of movies. Oh man, I just got rejected by my wife to go see a cartoon movie. <laughs> I remember How gay when, is that? Uh, when <laughs> you and Joe Covarrubias heck of ragged on me for like an anime because you guys <laughs> didn't watch it. So like whenever I brought up Dragon Ball or like Ninja Scroll or all the and you're like Pokemon, uh, Vampire Hunter, that's fucking gay. And then, I think Miyazaki is a little bit different from your what all the things that you just described. <laughs> Miyazaki is like a Disney version of anime. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so anyway, Howl's Moving Castle, uh, the reason I brought it up is because Alexander reminds me of uh, the Howl's Moving Castle. He's ba- he's just a gigantic robot who kind of looks like a, a castle. Like he has like, a, you know, like little fortress type um, towers. Like, like rooks. Yeah, they look, they look like rooks, that's right. Uh, I also like that he deals uh, a holy base damage to the enemies. Uh, when we did top spells, my number one was white, uh, which yes. was Rosa's spell, and I, for some reason, I just favor those magic spells that deliver damage based on uh, unholy aspects, I guess. Um, not much more to say about him. He just looked kind of cool, kind of goofy looking, actually. The way that he attacks is with this huge laser that just kind of goes from the top of the screen all the way to, or bottom of the screen all the way to the top. Um, not much more to say about him than that. 
in part six, don't you learn a uh, holy from him? I believe so. Yeah. <clears throat> Same thing, and I think you learned something like that in seven as well. Yeah, and you actually get him from doing science sub quest. Science? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Alexander. Uh huh. Yeah. He's like he's on the throne. Yeah. When you after you beat the boss, I can't remember who the boss was. It's not Alexander. It's someone else. But after you beat him, if you go to the throne room. He, the Magicite's just sitting right there. So that's my number five is Alexander. Number five on my list, the brothers from Final Fantasy VII. Do you guys remember those guys? Mm-mm. At least I can't remember right now. I can't. That's my number four. Uh, the brothers are a pair of... They're from eight. Are they? Yeah. Oh, okay, eight. Did that's, I say That's seven? why I don't remember. Uh, yeah, they're a pair of minotaurs from Final Fantasy VIII named... Minotaur and sacred that the party can attain. They appear in the tome of the unknown king and must be defeated in order to become usable by the party. After their defeat, you receive the, their cards from the Triple Triad game. Uh, the symbols on their shields means younger brother, who is sacred, and older brother, who is Minotaur. And he's the shorter one. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought was pretty funny. Uh, sacred speaks only in capitals while Minotaur speaks <laughs> only in lowercase letters <laughs> uh, and like we said while Sacred is a younger brother he's obviously larger than do you remember their um, summon what happens is you summon them and uh, as soon as they get summoned they come out from the ground where the enemy is so whatever ground the enemy is standing on they'll get launched up into the air hecka high up in the air because they never come down so what happens is Minotaur and Sacred start playing rock, paper, scissors, and it's always a tie. They do rock, paper, scissors, it's a tie. Rock, paper, scissors, it's a tie. Rock, paper, scissors, it's a tie. So the young, the older brother, which is the shorter one, just says screw it and throws the younger brother up in the air. And the and as he's going up in the air, he's like crying constantly, like tear, streams of water is coming down his face. And he crashes into the uh, island that en the enemies are on, and then they fall to the ground and deals damage. So that's pretty cool. The attack is called Brotherly Love. <laughs> 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 so that was my number four, was the brothers. All right. My number four is a fucking powerful wizard with an epic beard armed with a staff <laughs> larger than himself. <laughs> Jesus? Nah. <laughs> I don't know how you say his name. I, I would say Rama or Rama. Rama. I say Rama. 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 Uh, so I, as I said, he's a he's a wizard. He's got a really cool appearance. He wears this long robe and he's got this beard that goes down to the ground. He car he carries around a huge staff, and once you summon him, he just uh, comes out and summons the a lightning bolt to attack all the enemies uh, in the screen. The attack is called the Judgment Bolt. Um, in Final Fantasy VI, he actually plays a role in the story. He uh, calls Terra when she loses control of her magical powers in Zozo and helps to calm her while she rega regains her senses. Uh, he also tells the party about the War of the Magi and why the Espers flood the uh, the human world. And um, I, di I didn't put Ifrit or Shiva on my list, and those are the other two kind of major Espers or summons, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I, I just felt like Rama was always my favorite one. Whenever I had to choose one of them, I always chose with Rama. I always went with Rama. Uh, unless, of course, I was fighting like a fire monster. Of course, I'd choose Shiva or some sort of ice monster. Then I would choose Ifrit. But if it was just something, some random monster, and I needed a, a low-level summon, I'd always go with Rama. So that's my number four. Number four on my list is Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting all Guatemalan on us? Aztec. Aztec. So no, you're, no, you're Aztec god. The same thing. Didn't you say Quetzal, though? Yeah. I think you just say Quetzal. Yeah, Mr. Amesqua always used to get on me about that. <laughs> you'd, so if you said what, you'd say Quay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said that me and, uh, what was her name? Jennifer Johnson? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, she went out with Russell. Remember? Salvia? I know two Jennifers, Johnson and Crockett. Uh, it was it was a Mexican chick. She was like white, like light skinned. She he said that her and I got guava. Yeah, yeah. 
he said that uh, her and I should go on a date and speak uh, Spanish to each other because we were so horrible at the pronunciation. <laughs> nice. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's playing so matchmaker. <laughs> yeah, he was. Is it Gavia? Yep, yep. That's I don't it. even know who that is, but the name just popped in my na- my head. Yeah, she uh she went to our. Oh, I, think, I know who it is now. Sorry. I, th- I think she went to our elementary school. I know who it is. Okay. I hope she's not listening. <laughs> not, not hurt by I might not remember her. But uh, yeah, uh, we had the wor- worst accent. And one time we were playing a trivia game, and they said, "What is the plumed serpent in Aztecian?" myth or whatever and i heck knew that <laughs> he said quetzal <laughs> and i got it right and he he's like that's very good we played this trivia game and i got so many answers right for our team <laughs> like another question was um spanish mainly takes its primary roots from which culture and i said and i for some reason arabic popped out and he's like that is correct mr bartholomew <laughs> It was heck of funny when Mr. Mesquite would always try to talk in an English accent to make fun of people, yeah. <laughs> to make fun of Buelos. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just going to go down to the Burger King. Yeah. And, up. <laughs> and he told Ben Edgerton, he said, you, my friend, you remind me of that character in the movie I just saw called Pitch Black. Is this bald guy and... He was the most pure-hearted at the end out of everyone. He was talking about Vin Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> and I look back at Ben, I was like, he doesn't look like Vin Diesel. Well, maybe to Mr. Mesquite, all white people look like <laughs> Maybe. Well, I don't think Vin Diesel is white, is he? I don't think so. So back to Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> uh, uh, he was a huge Thunderbird in Final Fantasy VIII. And I mainly picked him just so I could tell the story of Senora Mesquois. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Mr. Bartholomew. Can I tell a quick uh, Mr. Mesquois oh, yeah. tale? Uh, so the last day of high school, I took Spanish four years in high school, so I would never have to take it again. I remember <laughs> <laughs> The last day, I was just standing outside, and I was just, you know, watching the cars drive by, just doing my thing in between periods. And he came out and started talking to me, He's, you know, talking about how, you know, he enjoyed teaching me over the course of four, well, I was only in his class for three years, but whatever. Uh, he, and he said I was a good student and all that good stuff. And then he, he said something that kind of caught me off guard. He's like, you know, over the course of the years, I've noticed you've gained a little bit of weight. And I was like, yeah, I, I guess so. He's all, well, you know... I really care about you, and I, I'm concerned. Maybe, maybe you should uh, take care of yourself better. And I was like, all right, all right. I don't remember exactly. Did I, did, I'm sure I told the story better before, cause, but I don't remember exactly what I said. But it just caught me off guard that a teacher would come up to me randomly and talk about my weight. It was, it was funny. Cared about you. Yeah. He was a good teacher. Yeah, he was one of the best at Rio Linda. Okay, number three on my list is going to have to be, uh, it's going to be a version of Bahamut. It's going to be Bahamut Neo from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, his move, Giga Flare. He takes the enemy off the ground, like kind of like the brothers do, so they're floating on a continent, and he suspends the whole thing in midair. He then gets right in their face and just blasts them to oblivion. That's such a cool summon. Uh, I remember it was on the demo disc of Final Fantasy VII. And we're like, oh, this is so awesome. Mm-hmm. And so Bahamut Neo. There's Bahamut, Bahamut Neo, and Bahamut Zero uh, for Final Fantasy VII. I didn't pick Bahamut Zero because he looks too space agey, all like metallic y and stuff. So he looked like a uh, red eyes black metal dragon. Yep, from, from Yu Gi Oh! Yep. Honic. Yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. That was my number three, Bahamut Neo. My number three is from uh, Final Fantasy IV. I believe that's the only Final Fantasy that she's in. Uh, she is the queen of the uh, Eidolons, or however you want to say it. And, and four, they call them Eidolons or Eidolons. Her name is Asura. She's a three-faced, six-armed woman who sits like uh, cross-legged style and hovering hovers above the ground. Uh, when she's summoned, her face changes rapidly, and the face that is the last face that's showing uh, deter- determines what spell she does. Uh, she doesn't do any attacking spells. 
She does all um, HP recovery spells or revival spells. And I guess in other versions of the game, not the SNES version, uh, she did like a protection type spell. But uh, in the SNES version, it was either like a, a Cura or a Curaga. Or it'll, it depends on uh, what face was showing, as I said. Uh, so, as I said, uh, she's the queen of the Eidolons. Uh, she rules alongside King Leviathan. Uh, she is, she's not really the mother, but she's kind of like the adopted mother of Rydia, which I thought was a kind of a cool little plot twist. Uh, you also have to defeat her in order to gain her uh, abilities. So that's my number three. So, do you think Asher and Leviathan consummated, like, in their Eidolon form? I was going to say, she probably fisted herself sending six hands in <laughs> <laughs> Sitting cross because like they had a, like your little human forms, right? Yeah. yeah. Had, so do you think like like it gets too intense that they just transform? Wouldn't you? I don't know how that would work though. I would. Like Leviathan's huge. That's what she likes. <laughs> so obviously he had to start with the N, and then he would transform into. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Uh, she'd be like, cure, cure, cure. <laughs> <laughs> and the mean looking face would uh appear, would appear. and protect. <laughs> I don't know, Brandon. And then Leviathan's yeah. like, wall and he can't cure herself. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he want to do that though? Because he's a masochist or a sadist, whichever one. Oh man. So my number three. With the wave of the summoner's staff, a nighttime dimension forms, featuring a single cherry tree in blossom with blue flowers. A bark is heard, and that's Yojimbo's dog. <laughs> Yojimbo slowly walks out from behind the tree, then turns with the sweep of his coat and calls upon his dog to start the battle. I picked Yojimbo as my number three. Really? Yeah, I thought he was really cool. He was the first, like, the first optional summoner you could get in Final Fantasy X. Uh, Yojimbo is uh, from Final Fantasy X. He is acquired by visiting the Cavern of the Stolen Faith, where the player must have him uh, must hire him to become Yuna's Aeon. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And you have to pay him to attack because in Japanese legend, Yojimbo travels the countryside as a mercenary, and you, however much skill you pay him, is that how that's what kind of attack he does? <laughs> uh, but his entrance is one of my favorite of all time, and that's why he's on my number three. Final Fantasy X Aeons work differently because you got to actually control them. They yeah. get summoned, and you could control them. Mm. I thought that was pretty cool. My number two is going to have to be Odin. He has a six-legged horse. He can obliterate any foe and even some bosses in some games. He's the king of Baron in Final Fantasy IV. And the cool thing is you have to fight him to gain his power. Uh, he, he'll give you uh, like a countdown from five to one, then he'll just kill you if you don't kill him in time. Uh, I always thought it was cool in later games when he'd come out and it was raining and there were puddles and he'd just like, step out with the horse. Yeah. And he used Zetsuken or whatever it's called. Zetsuken! It's so cool. It's like the scimitar type move from Final Fantasy VI and does dispatches of an enemy instantly. One person could survive that Odin attack. Kane. Fuck yeah. He, he, could, he could jump up yeah. and avoid it and be the only one left alive. We, we beat him like that one time. He killed every one of us and then... Um, but the thing is, after he counts down, and if it misses, he'll like use it again, like in a few seconds. So you gotta keep jumping. Oh, what else are you gonna do with Kane? <laughs> Hit him with a dwarf axe? No. <laughs> Have him use Blizzard staff? <laughs> no. Odin was my number two as well. He's just so cool. With I can't remember his uh, horse's name. It was it Fifnir or Fenrir? Fifnir? Fifnir, I think. Yeah. Fenrir was the wolf. wolf. Yeah. So it was. Odin's really cool. I liked Odin too. I was thinking about putting him on my list, but anytime I tried to use him, his attack wouldn't work very yeah. well. Yeah. I, I I was reading something like it, it's determined based on like how many hit points you have or how high your level is. Do you know, do you know what just what determines I, I would, how I would well it works? How strong you are. 
But if you're that strong, wouldn't you just kill the yeah. monsters yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I like Odin a lot as well, but I didn't like how how much it didn't work. I definitely like the Final Fantasy version of Odin more than the Norse god version of Odin. Of course. You know what I didn't like about Thor the movie? i never seen Thor the movie. In Thor, I don't know if it's in Thor Part 1, but in Thor 2, you see Odin. It is cool he doesn't have the eye like he does in Norse mythology. You know, he gives up his eye for eternal wisdom. He has a crow instead of an owl, and I thought that sucked dick. Because in Norse mythology, he's an owl, and that's where he gets his wisdom. But no, they gave him a, a another cool bird with a crow or a raven, but... That doesn't make sense. Not as How cool. can they give you wisdom? I could see if they gave you like special death properties, like you could kill people hecka easy, but... Odin's such a douche in the Thor movies anyways. Anthony Hopkins, he's an alright actor, but not as <laughs> Odin. Because it's Sounds of the Lambs. <laughs> huh? Because it's Sounds of the Lambs. I think you're supposed to call him Sir Anthony Hopkins. He's knighted. Oh, he's that Sir. An- he's that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Han- uh, Hannibal, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nah. Silence of the Lambs, my favorite. The '91. Like, love that movie. It puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> I like Red Dragon. I think my Red my, Dragon was that, cool that's too. That's a really good movie. My number two is uh, in the whole scheme of things, a pretty weak summon. It's the Mist Dragon from Final Fantasy IV. Uh, like I said, very very weak in the whole in the whole scheme of things, but the the way that she plays into the story I thought was really cool. Uh, so she appears in Final Fantasy IV right at the beginning of the game when uh, Cecil and Kid or Kid Tane are uh, going to the what, what is the name of the city where Rydia lives? I can't think. The of right. Village of Mist. The Village of <laughs> Pretty easy. <laughs> uh, the Village of Mist, and, and to get there they have to go through the Mist Cave, uh, and in order to get through the mist cave, they have to fight this uh, this mist dragon. So they slay the mist dragon, and once they get to the village of mist, of course, they unleash hell on the city uh, without their knowledge, actually. They were just sent on, sent on a mission to deliver a package. So once they open this package on the king's orders, it, it basically tears down the whole whole uh, village. They find Rydia there, and Rydia's in, in tears, and they're like trying to figure out what's wrong with her. They, they come to find out that her mother was a summoner, and her uh, her monster was the Mist Dragon. And once the Mist Dragon dies, she dies with it. And this basically turned the whole game on to put the whole game in the in the in the proper direction. That's when Cain and uh, Cecil decided to defect from the uh, the corrupt king, and that's when uh, Rydia. She doesn't join the party. In fact, she summons Titan to uh, cast Quake, and it, it, it throws Kane and Cecil apart. And uh, that's when they go on their mission to. Uh, I believe they go first to find the. Uh, what's it called? The talisman or, or the the ruby amulet? Because they get separated. Doesn't Kane get separated from Cecil? And yeah, the, exactly. And the, the sand and, the, and the earthquake. The sand ruby. That's what it was. To uh, to heal. Rosa, her who, desert fever. Yeah. So just the like I said, the Mist Dragon doesn't play a huge part in the game. Uh, once Viridia comes back later in the game, uh, she does use the Mist Dragon to defeat one of Golbez's monsters called the Shadow Dragon, mm-hmm. and that uh, allows the party to actually attack Golbez because prior to that, the Shadow Dragon was basically it, it, it was impenetrable. So it was a just a really cool little monster in terms of the story, but didn't really do a whole lot in terms of the actual gameplay. And I just wanted to give it some props. So this, so, so does that mean Rydia is afraid of death? Like when she summons, she just summons the monster for a quick attack and then draws it back instead of leaving it out there to attack the enemy. Because if the enemy kills it, she would die. Okay, because that's what the mom did. Yeah, the mist dragon. Yeah, so she summoned the mist dragon and didn't and didn't draw it back, and it died, so she died. So you're saying that Rydia summons the monster just real quick and then pulls it back because she's afraid to die. That's the only reason I could come up with. It's also smart <laughs> not to leave it out there to die. Yeah, and if that's an option, you might as well do it. Yeah, that's true. I never thought of that. How. Her mom was a summoner and just left it out there. Or maybe she was more powerful and, and was able and, to and have it last it, longer. Or to put her body in it or something. Because when I first played that game, I thought Rydia's mom was actually a dragon. Yeah. 
It is kind of a weird concept, especially because Bridia can summon so many monsters. Mm. But then again, she's the last of the summoners, so who? I guess you're kind of you don't really gain a whole lot of information yeah. about the summoners in that game, because she's the only one. I wish they would do a remake of the old Final Fantasies, like other than just on the DS, like maybe for the PlayStation or something. That would be so freaking and awesome. Just add so much extra content that they that they could do now that they could do back then, like all backstories and answer all the questions that we have. Instead of the psycho nerds on the forums giving their opinion of what should happen <laughs> or what did take place in retrospect or in, in just a theory. And number two on my list was Odin as well. Number one on my list got to be Anima for Final Fantasy X. Oh, I thought it was Anima. Anima, same thing. Oh, I love that one. That's my number one as well. Man, talk about torment and pain and destruction. When this guy summoned a giant anchor hook goes down into the ground into and, hell and pulls him up from his face <laughs> yeah. um, he looks like he's in constant torment he has an attack that is just called pain <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is seymour's aeon and you actually could gain access to it i mean when when at the beginning of the game when you're when like Seymour is constantly trying to get into the unit's pants, and he's like showing off and summons Anima, or Anima. You're like, why does someone who's supposed to be have this good image have this such foul creature? Like you know he's evil, and no one's like thinking about that. Yeah, that thing looks way too evil to be just, just to be like showing off with. Yeah, like why are you showing me this? You actually gain access to it. There's two parts. One of it is just sticking up out of the ground, kind of like a um, like a pistachio nut. Mm-hmm. And in the middle is, is her face and arms and everything chained up. And then underneath is just a big, huge creature, too. And that attacks as well. Uh, this thing's vicious. It's my favorite someone just because it looks so demonic and it could use pain. <laughs> uh, and Anima's overdrive is like the limit break of the Aeons. Like, it just starts attacking, and it takes away 99,999 lives of each attack, and it attacks, like, 8 to 10 times. That's the part underneath. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's so awesome. And like you said, the anchor bringing it up, and it's all chained and bound. It reminds me of, like, Hellraiser, it, one of those Cenobites, and oh, it's just so cool. It's great entrance and great Aeon. I went with a no- little bit more of a traditional uh, Esper or Eidolon or whatever you want to call it with Bahamut for my number one. He's considered to be the god of the Eidolons in uh, Final Fantasy IV. He lives on the moon. He's waiting for... Uh, he doesn't wait, but that's where he is. Uh, for Rydia to come and challenge him so that uh, you can gain his ability to summon him. Uh, in order to engage in the battle, you have to have obtained all the other Eidolons prior to fighting him. And once you uh, have defeated him, Rydia can use him to... Uh, summon him so that he can use his mega flare attack uh and as brad mentioned earlier in final fantasy 7 he reappears as uh as himself but there's also the neo bahamut and the bahamut zero versions i actually like the bahamut zero versions probably because i'm not jaded by uh the Yu-Gi-Oh mega dragon whatever the fuck you said before <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's my number one i mean to me, there's nothing better than summoning a dragon to help you out. So and I usually I like the in space type versions, like Leprechaun in space, <laughs> Jason, Jason X. X. Right. Um, but yeah, that the whole black me- the re- uh, black metal red red eyes black dragon kind of put a little disdain on it because the blue eyes white dragon is just so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Three thousand attack. Oh man! You don't have to use polymerization to get it you out. Don't. You just need two monsters to sacrifice. And there, there could be the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which has 4,500 attack. If you use polymerization with three Blue Eyes, awesome. Uh, that's my segue to the <laughs> next topic. Okay. Unless we add our HMs. I do. Um, honorable mention I have Crusaders, uh, Madeline <laughs> for Esper Sex, Doom Train, which was a side quest to get. He calls status elements in Final Fantasy VIII. The Tonberry King. Yeah. Cactar. <laughs> Any honorables? I like Titan. Titan was good in 4 Against the Doors. 
and I like Titan and Seven when he lifts up the earth and just flips it on the enemy. That was cool. Like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Ultimate Warrior. You Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you will die, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Put the airplane into a nosedive, <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Steve Austin podcasts, and there, you know, he talks about greatest like promos, greatest promos that people do. He never brings up Ultimate Warrior. That's fine. Yeah, he brings up uh, Piper and Dusty Rhodes, and but never the Ultimate Warrior. You know, in the earlier versions of that podcast, like cause I've been listening to it a lot as well. He always did like a word of the day. Yeah. I, I haven't heard him do it for a long time though. Yeah. Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus. <laughs> I watched uh, Hulu Plus and they have commercials uh, like where commercials would be for TV. <laughs> and there's this uh, commercial where there's this dude holding like a pa- it's a painting of a guy with a mullet holding a dog. And he, and oh, it's a cat. And he goes, Mr. Whiskers, don't get all Caddy Wampus on me now. <laughs> I like how he uses the word gimmick all the time, too. Yeah. It's funny. Dishonorable mentions? Oh, man. Uh, I have... I, I didn't like Kokobo when Rydia, that was her only summon. Kokobo kick. Uh, unicorn. <laughs> Remedy. Uh, Carbuncle. Carbuncle just, was tied. Just put on a hate uh, reflector. No, I like Carbuncle. It was oh. cute looking. It looked like a little uh, uh, Eevee, like an Espeon. Mm-hmm. Bismarck. <laughs> Wasn't there something called like Knights of the Round or something like that in Seven? Yes. That took like 30 minutes to watch. Oh, that, that's <laughs> what I, I have down here. And any summon that takes more than eight seconds to complete. <laughs> in Final Fantasy VIII, it was Eden, which was this long, drawn out spell where like dimensions, like they, they tried to be so weird with that game. Dimensions would. It would flip the enemy upside on, upside down. They'll be still sitting there doing their enemy motion. <laughs> and then it'll show the world. Yeah. And they'll have a clock. <laughs> <laughs> and then like a beam. <laughs> and then an ultimate like on The Simpsons when they entered 3D, that cone. Like a long dimension cone. <laughs> and I'm just like sitting there like, I watched it last time. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like longer than Nights of the Round. <laughs> Wasn't there a ship too? Was it a ship? It was like a giant ship and... Oh, what was the one in 10 where it was like a ship came in and then turned into like a robot? Ark? Yeah, Ark. I, I watched that yesterday. I was like, come on. <laughs> uh, Knights of the Round took so long to complete. It's stupid as hell. I like Diablos from 8. He was cool. He was cool. Um, that one, uh, Shote. Oh, the, the pig. <laughs> Petrified. <laughs> Useless. I think Riddy had an imp summon too. <laughs> you could find the imp and the balloon and the um, cockatrice. And the mind flare. You could get mind flare too. What's mind flare? The, like the dude with the squid face. What? Oh, really? Yeah. He's a summon too. I know what she used him for. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not rape if you summon me. <laughs> like. Two in each hole. Oh man, who who was was who was the um the death character that threw things into cauldrons? That was Diablos, wasn't it? No, I don't think so. From part seven, Hades. Oh, okay, Hades, yeah. And then part eight is when Diablos came. Um, like I said, Doom Train was cool, but you had to do a whole weird side quest to get him. Uh, Kiata from seven. What was that? I think that's that pig thing. Show. Uh, Tritoch. Tritoch is cool. Give you a lit three, fire three, and ice three. Um, I, I didn't care for the Seraphim or the. Get Ashura was good enough. Uh, Golem was just kept casted protect. There was a lot of summons that I think they they like either high on, like they they took some acid and was like, dude, let's get a unicorn and you know unicorn horns heal everything. <laughs> They'll cast remedy, like. You had some Asians dropping acid over there, or... Wasn't <laughs> Golem a robot? Yeah. Um, there was Palador. That was pretty cool when he let everybody use junk. But some summons, I'm just like, they just thought of some shit, and like, let's just throw some more in there, some more espers. Maybe that was uh, 
they had a lot of contests back then in Japan to like get get your idea put into a game. Maybe that was a contest. I don't know how Unicorn would have won a contest. <laughs> <laughs> or that one Phantom one, which cast invisibility on you. Vanish. But um, that was our top five. Look forward to a very entertaining top five next week. So let's go on to our jerk of the week. I have one. A real one this time. Last week I edited out. Uh, Nick said, do you have a jerk of the week? And I was like, oh, crap, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I do. And I just thought of like the first thing. But I have a true one this week. Jerk of the week for me, my previous employer. <laughs> oh, man. They're old people who work in a growing healthcare industry. The, all the managers are old people. They don't want to take advice. They're not tech savvy. And they're closed-minded to all kinds of change. So whenever I would suggest something to streamline the process or something that would make sense, they wouldn't do it. So now thanks to Obamacare, which I didn't like before, but now I like it because it's funding my job. <laughs> I got a new job and a new with the county, and it's working out very well. I'm so happy. Um, in my training class, I have someone who talks just like Sherry Moon Zombie, that high-pitched voice. <laughs> If I close my eyes, it's like Sherry Moon is sitting right there. Um, but it's so cool. My the pre, Where I was working before, there were a bunch of jerks. So, jerk of the week. I just ran into my jerk of the week about an hour and a half ago. This beautiful Polar Pop from Circle K. I picked 86 up. 89 cents. 89 cents. 96 cents with tax. Filled up to the brim with Mountain Dew voltage. Yes. I was perfectly content in my jerk of the week entered the store. Goes by the name of Ricardo. He sabotaged my soccer team. I have an indoor soccer team. It was a men's over 30 team. And I don't have a whole lot of friends that play soccer. I have like two or three friends that are on the team, and the rest are just people who I would manage to recruit by going to the, the soccer arena and, you know, get, gathering interest. And finally, get, I got enough guys. You needed about 10 players to have it form an indoor soccer team. The bad part about that is that you don't really know them that well. So collecting money from them can sometimes be an issue. So I, I, I went through three seasons with this guy. Each well, season, uh, each season, it was this this guy. Well, there's a couple guys, but this guy in particular was the one who kind of pu- pushed it over the edge. So I, I would pay everything up front because if the, if the registration fees aren't paid, no one plays. So if I don't pay, then no one plays. So I went ahead and paid everything up front just on the understanding that people would pay me back or preferably that day. Um, some of these guys is like pulling teeth with. With my friends, Tim and Justin, it was no problem, of course. And there was a few guys, like there was a guy that I worked with who I knew it was no problem. Uh, and some of the other guys, no problem. But there's always one. In, in this situation, there was two, but there was there's always at least one who is just so hard to pull get money from. And this guy, he would pay me back in like increments, which is fine, but just let me know up front that you're gonna do it that way. So I, I'd be I'd come up to him after the game, like, hey, you got my my money for me? He'd be like, oh, he'd owe me like seventy, eighty bucks, whatever it was. You know, oh, I got twenty this week. I'll uh, I'll bring you another twenty next week. <clears throat> All right, whatever. But then one one <coughs> season, the final season. I, you know, every, before the season, I'd send out a message to everyone. Is everyone, does everyone want to play? Does everyone have the money to play? Yada, yada, yada. Everyone says yes. So I go ahead and pay. He doesn't show up. Next week, he doesn't show up. Every week, I'm I'm sending him messages. Hey, you going to come this week? Are you going to be able to pay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll see you next week. Just doesn't show up the whole season. Like, I, I, I don't have the money to pay for people to play soccer, man. So I, I, so I stopped it. <laughs> I asked someone. I asked if anyone else wanted to take it over. No one took it over, so the team disbanded. The the guy walked into the Circle K <laughs> today, and he was all smiles. He's like, "Oh, hey Nick, how you yeah. doing?" He's like, "Oh, hey man." He's like, "Oh, are you still playing over at the soccer arena?" He's like, "No, I I I didn't have enough people to play." He's like, "Oh man, I saw I saw some other guys over there playing." He's like, "All right, whatever." That's my jerk of the week. <laughs> It's not only that he didn't pay me, but that he acted like it was no big deal. Technically, that guy probably he probably owes me a hundred bucks, and he's in there acting like everything's all cool, buying fucking cantaloupes and scratchers. <laughs> so if you want to 
summarize it, it's not just this guy. It's anyone who's out to su- sabotage my sports teams. That's my jerk of the week. There you go. <laughs> Fucking Ricardo. Did I say his name? <laughs> oh, I was trying not to say his name. Yeah. I, if I said it, fuck Ricardo. <laughs> He's probably in the back of the Circle K right now giving out handies. <laughs> So that'll do it for episode 43 of Trade Running for Nostalgia. Look forward to, as Brad says, sexy time with magic spells next week. This is Brandon. (laughs) This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.